Go slow. Keep the pressure steady. Don't stop. You've got this. I'm standing ready to push a two by four piece of wood towards a blade. It's huge and I can hear its vicious racket even through my earmuffs that are over my head. It's five times the size of my eight-year-old hands. I'm standing on the top rung of a step stool because I'm so small and the table saw is so massive, I barely reach the top. My dad is standing right behind me, his arms wrapped around mine, his fingertips placed gently on the top of my knuckles as I push my fingers forward. That blade is coming right at me. I can feel its teeth grab the wood as it starts to pulverize it. I am scared out of my mind. But I know I'm going to do this. I do. You kept the pressure up. Your hands were steady. Great job. Am I in a cone of silence, or an alternate universe, or maybe the twilight zone? I'm in a room full of my male colleagues, and no one can hear me. I pinch myself. Nope, really here. What in the world is going on? And then it hits me. I'm a girl. They can hear me just fine. They're simply choosing to ignore me because I have boobs. Wow. I'm stunned. And then the wave of devastation hits. I have never felt so alone in a room filled with people. I can't leave. So I sit quietly. I look down at my notes so I don't have to interface with anyone else in the room. I don't utter a peep for the rest of that meeting. I walk out, devastated. I've failed, and it hurts. Women started entering STEM back in World War II to make up for the men that were overseas. We continued to have women enter STEM in, in numbers that peaked in 1984 with 35% of the graduates getting degrees in computer science being women. However, for the past decade, the number of female graduates across all the areas of STEM have flattened. Even worse, in computer science, the number of female graduates has gone down to 18%. And yet, in computer science, it's expected to, jobs are expected to grow from between 28 and 32%. So we need women in STEM. A Stanford study tells us that girls are praised and critiqued on who they are as a person. You did that wrong. Where boys are critiqued and praised on their specific task that they're working on. Right there somewhere is the error in that math problem. This systematic problem continues on into adulthood. Another study demonstrates that when a man goes in for his yearly performance review, he is given concrete action items and specific feedback on where to improve. 
women, we're told you need to work harder at that or you need to do better. It's no wonder why we've internalized this messaging. I equate who I am with what I've done. I have to be perfect. I have to do everything exactly right. Because if I don't, I'm a failure. Back at my first job, I had a colossal failure. But I took that moment and I decided to rise up and dust myself off. And I was able to go and talk to my coworkers about what it was I wanted and what it is that I needed from them. I made allies with my coworkers. I made allies of my bosses, and I made allies of the people who worked for me. I hired every single woman who walked in the door, not because she's a woman, but because she was unbelievably qualified to hold the job. And I made sure when I gave feedback no matter who it was to on the team. It was very specific and focused on the task and not generalized about their person. I was able to step up into STEM, to step up to the table saw, and to thrive in a male-dominated field in no small part because my dad told me specific praise and critiques. So I understood that a failure was just a simple incident and not a reflection on who I was as a person. It's about time that we focus on the impact of the project and not on the gender of the person doing it.